there's two ways to build a business, right? To really scale a company. Uh, one is with a brand, right? Which is awesome. And, and I, I'm, I'm someone naturally, I think a lot of people that are listening can relate to this. I know you can for sure with what y'all built is I would rather attract people to me than just chase people forever, right? And really build something over time to where I've eventually got this attraction force of people coming to me every day, every minute looking for help in some way, right? That's what we've built here with an amazing team and just doing that for almost seven years now uh, in, we got about, uh, well, we got about 58 days and we've been doing this for seven years, the YouTube thing, right? And building a brand. Yeah. S second, 58 days, seven hours and 42 seconds. Okay. Uh, the second is people. And I, it's interesting because when we, when we grow, when we, when we grow up or we get into business, like we don't, re nobody really teaches us that an agency is going to grow. We're going to make a bunch of money. Yeah. We're going to have financial freedom, but we're going to end up with this business that we know nothing about running a business. And then we try to add people and HR and staff and operations and all this stuff. And then we end up with all these other additional pieces of things that we don't know anything about at all. And we make a million mistakes to try to figure it out. And, but the people piece is the piece that really fascinates me, right? I love the brand piece. Love it. Um, you know, we have hundreds of thousands of agents and advisors that follow us online in some capacity and that work with us or on our email list or been to our events or something. However, the people piece is really special because we all build a business so that one day, if we want to take our spouse to Hawaii for a month, we could do that. And the business doesn't crumble. That's the real reason we get into business, whether we say it or not. Like a lot of people say I get into business because I want time or I want money. Well, they're both true. But if you end up a business and you have to do it all and you're answering the phone and you're working your pending and you're sending emails and you're posting on social media and you're answering, you know what I mean? You're doing this and that. Um, you end up not being able to, you end up with money, but you don't end up with any time. And I want to build something to where I want to get out of my own way, find people that are better. And there's plenty of people out there that are way better at certain stuff than Cody Askins. It's good. I finally realized that. And then I got a business where, hey, if I want to take a month off, I can do it. Now, my personality I'm not ready to do that yet. However, one day, <laughs> one day I may want to, you know? Yeah. 2035 comes around. You might say, hey, you know what? I want to, I want to take a week off. Let's just try it out. You know, Dude, <laughs> 44 years old in, 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 in 2030, you know, 45 years old. That sounds good. You know, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's dissect those two things independently. So building a brand, I think one thing that advisors and agents and just business owners in general struggle with now is what does that even mean? You know, mm. Coca-Cola is a brand, right? You yeah. know, it. McDonald's is a brand. There's, there's other things that have a, have a voice. There's, yep. there's companies that speak to you with a personality. And as an advisor, how do you, how do you stand out? You know, you're, yeah. You're not all selling the same thing, but you really are selling the same thing, right? It's a right. It's a um, relationship business. So how yes. do you how do you brand that? Yeah, I mean that's a good point, man. I mean think about Coca Cola as you mentioned. Um, not a brand I want to consume on a daily basis anymore. <laughs> anymore. I used to consume a lot of it, too much of it, right? Especially Taco Bell, Pepsi, like you know. However, um, I don't know what it was about Taco Bell's Pepsi, which is special, man. You know, but it's not something I <laughs> not something well, I can. They had that Baja Blast there for a while. That was Dude, all exclusive, right? And they that was good. decided yeah. to bottle up that gold, you know? You know? That, they did, bro. Like Brett, Brett is on my, uh, a media team in the studio. And he's like, he, he said, mm, when you said Baja Blast. However, it, it's not like neither is something I want to consume, right? From the Coke or Pepsi brand. But I do like to, to they have got to where when you think about soda or pop, man, you, you don't, you just say Coke. You know, like you could be drinking Dr. Pepper and you just say Coke, you know, like, you know what I mean? It's just like the, the, they, they've built that brand. However, it takes time to build a brand. Most people are very uncomfortable building a brand and very impatient. So you got to be comfortable at putting your face out there and people seeing it. That, that's not easy for people. Like, you know what I mean? That takes time. And, and initially we're like, okay, if you got to be arrogant or this egomaniac to like put your face on stickers, you know, even though that wasn't my decision probably Dylan's fault. However, we did it. <laughs> right. But I, I've gotten comfortable being uncomfortable. Now, is there also additional level levels and layers to that along the way? Yes. Because now when, I, when we're talking about doing stuff, it's like, okay, we're looking at 3000 people being 8% 2023. That means I've got to stand on stage in front of 3000 people. Um, whew, Cody's never done that before yet. Right. I may have done it virtually, but that's totally different than doing it in person. Yeah. Right. Oh, so yeah. is that, Am I going to have to be uncomfortable doing that? Yes. Um, also too, though, it takes time. Like a lot of people, 
That's the two reasons they give up on building a brand. They're not comfortable putting themselves out there or they're impatient and they want it yesterday or they think that they see someone right like white glove and they say dude it, you know what that 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 happened overnight you know well it did not it took some time you know i mean you guys have been in business and doing your thing for probably far longer than i have with this stuff you know however it's something that you had to get comfortable with and you had to put, put time in and it, it's kind of like the, the part i love about a brand is it's a snowball it's growing, it's stacking, it's building. So, so, some moments you feel like you're pushing it up a hill, but it, it can still grow, but man, it's freaking a struggle, right? Other times it's just rolling downhill and it's just gaining momentum and speed and it's building. Well, that's a brand, but sometimes you got to push it up. Sometimes it rolls down. However, you, it doesn't mean you never stop pushing it uphill at some points too, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I love that analogy too because you can all remember back when you were a kid or you're playing with your kids, right? And you are building a snowman that, that yes, it packs on itself. You're building a snowball. It gets, it gets bigger and bigger, but that doesn't mean that it's yep easy. In fact, it's, sometimes it's, it, sometimes it gets harder. Yeah. Sometimes you end up in snowball fights, you know, yeah. with, with your competitors, <laughs> you know, I mean, who knows? <laughs> that's, that's right. So what would be the first step? Okay. I've decided, Hey, I'm in business. I run my agency. I run my um, advisory practice. I'm looking to attract clients. I'm looking to attract more agents. Mm -hmm. You know, how do I make myself special? How do I decide this is what my brand should represent? Yeah, yeah I, th I think well, I think that that's that's one that's a great question because one of the things that hold people back when they're building a brand is okay, who do I want to speak to? And if you don't know who you want to speak to, then you're going to speak to everybody and it's not going to resonate with anybody, right? And so if I want to if I want to speak to everyone but I really don't want to speak to everyone. Like, for example, I used to think I want to speak to everyone in the insurance industry. Well, that's a niche. That's cool. However, I don't know that I really want to, right? Like we have this, um, right now we're speaking to two different audiences. First one, like we, we have a new program called Six Figure Society. We had an agency, an agent in uh, Canada and Indonesia, both join it yesterday morning. And that is, uh, we're speaking to agents that want to make six figures that haven't yet. And we're giving them access to all of our courses and weekly coaching. And there's like $30,000 worth of value for 40 bucks a month, right? It's ridiculous. However, that's a core message of our content resonates with that group. I made six figures at 20. We've got 22, 2300 videos on YouTube that are helping agents get to six figures, right? That's one. However, my style wants to, has always wanted to evolve for years into speaking to agencies and agency owners and people that are looking to build something big, right? So as people transition... Then we've got other programs where we're helping connect agents to agencies and helping them with recruiting and stuff, right? Where then I'm speaking to agencies. Well, the, I can't speak to an agent and an agency the exact same way, right? So if I'm, if I'm putting out content, there's certain content that resonates with agents. There's also certain content that resonates with agencies. Also though, if you think about it and you're like, okay, how about the size of my audience that I'm targeting? There's way more agents that haven't made six figures yet then there are agencies that have, okay? So the audience is bigger there. However, if you were building a business around helping one of those, there's more money in the agency piece because they actually have money, right? So, <laughs> so right? right. So, so you've got to think about your brand and what that is. If it's a financial advisor, right? I think one of the things that, um, like for example, if I had to go back to selling insurance, like I did for years and I loved uh, but I thought about it recently. I'm like, man, like I haven't actually sold interest policy. It's been over like half, over half a decade. Like how ridiculous is that? However, if I did, I wouldn't go back because now my, my think bigger, I involve people, I involve branding. Like I think much differently than I did 12 years ago. Now I wouldn't think about selling like a bunch of little bitty stuff. You know, like before I was like, man, PDPs, like, you know, cha-ching, freaking dental plans, baby sized life insurance policies, all phenomenal. Now I'm like, uh, Right now, I'm like, if I was going to do something, maybe it'd be, you know, IULs, maybe it'd be annuities. Yeah. Right. Maybe it'd be, I would want to level up and evolve at some point. I wouldn't want to just rinse and repeat and do the same thing and talk about the same thing forever and sell the same thing forever. Like I'm evolving from helping agents to agencies. The same thing with agents and advisors. They want their brand to evolve, they want their products to evolve, they want their clientele to evolve. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love.
It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. What advice would you guys give to some to millennial young hustling agents like y'all that are uh, they're you know they're they're struggling they're trying to figure it out um, they want to succeed they're hungry you know what advice would y'all have for that Yeah, I would say that there's a couple things.